Hello lovelies, I am the Fragnostic. Welcome to the hard-earned glories of the weekend and welcome to another antique stomping edition of Retro Rumble! This week, dinosaur bastards get ideas above their stations, break loose from their cages and attempt to run a business by eating all of their customers. A complete lack of understanding of the basic tenets of capitalism is surely among the most glaring reasons that nature selected these scaly fuckwits for annihilation the first time around. But thanks to John Hammond's deific meddling, it's once again up to you and I to finish the job here in Jurassic Park, developed and released by Sega to booming arcades everywhere in 1994. Now, this is a bit of a holy grail for me gaming wise. I have never managed to knock Jurassic Park on the head with just one credit. I've come incredibly close before, incredibly fucking close, but I always managed to lose just enough health in some of the key areas to suffer dark and shameful defeat, but who knows? With the magic of the retro rumble behind us, such insurmountable feats have proven conquerable in the past, have they not? Come, let us pilot Mother Extinction's Combine Harvester once more and see this accursed race back to the grave. We sit behind the wheel of the iconic Ford Explorer Land Cruiser, as displayed in the top right there. That's immediately the wrong fucking car. Great job, Sega. Those are the ones that run on an electric rail in the movies, and although we're starting out on one here as we enter the park, it will soon become apparent as we're forced off-road that we are in fact driving one of the gas-powered Jeep Wrangler utility vehicles that Ellie, Muldoon and Malcolm used to flee from the T-Rex, as we are suddenly and pants-shittingly forced to do so here. I've said it a hundred times before on this channel, and I'll say it again. This froze the piss dead in my dick when I first played it as an eight-year-old, partly because Tyrannosaurs are the closest thing we've ever had on this planet to being the devil in animal form, but also because since when do you start a game out fighting its most powerful fucking enemy? Surely you think to yourself, Surely I'll warm up by blowing a few of the dopier dinosaurs apart first. A handful of those little green bastards maybe swing by the stegosaur enclosure and practice a couple of drive-bys on them before we even think about looking over at anything that could single-handedly topple mankind off the top of the food chain. But no, no sooner have you put your money in than Jurassic Park's trying to get rid of you by dropping a fucking T-Rex on your plate. There you go, hurry up and die. Get that line moving, boy. Medipacks do absolute dick in comparison to the damage you take here. You might as well be trying to bandage yourself up with just more dinosaurs. Now, the key to surviving this is to figure out which of these fuckers will hit you the hardest. Because you are going to get hit. This was designed to be a challenge for two players. Don't believe for a second that anybody on the development team ever expected you to be able to pull off a solo run without having to nip off between deaths to put your fucking house up for collateral to pay for it. Like right here, the grey triceratops hit you. That's doable, you can live with that. Let one of those brown fuckers anywhere near your jeep and your health bar will look like God himself just fucking sat on you. So they're the ones you want to machine gun the Christmas spirit out of. Christ, stop chasing me! It doesn't all belong to you, you greedy bastards. Leave some for the other dinosaurs. I want you to know what we're shooting these with, by the way. Notice how there's a mini explosion every time we fire. Keep that in mind for the ending. Right, out of the frying pan, straight into the secret circle of hell reserved for sentient burning attack cocks here. It's everybody's favorite fantasy dinosaur. The spit shit in your damn face, or uh, the Dilophosaur, if you want to be boring and write about it. Remember in the movie where Alan and the gang drove past their enclosure and were super disappointed they couldn't see one? Well, they sure fixed the fuck out of that. They'll be back to piss us off a bit more later. For now, you get to deal with about 5 million fucking Pteranodons. Now, these operate a little like the Triceratops in that the golden ones do ludicrous amounts of damage to you and the brown ones don't, so they need to be your priority here. I guess they must be the POISONED ONES! Note 2, these are Pteranodons, not Pterodactyls. Pterodactyl is commonly and erroneously used to describe most of the so-called flying dinosaurs, but the actual genus Pterodactylus were wee little things with a 
wingspan of about a meter, mere prehistoric houseflies in comparison to their much larger brothers, the Tyrannodons, who could grow to have a wingspan of up to 23 feet and would hurt a hell of a lot more if they crashed into your head. Under the tree line we go to discover that John Hammond has been growing magical levitating foliage with no trunks to be seen. Spared no expense, eh, John? You cackling fucking fruitcake. Thankfully, the Dilophosaurs are the only enemies in the game with a projectile attack. No dual-wielding Velociraptors to worry about here. Although, if you want to count Sega literally throwing armfuls of them at your windshield, you can go ahead and do that. If you keep your crosshair on kind of a center axis here, you should be able to nail most of their toxic phlegm before it burns your eyes out. Of course, that won't save you from the ones that jump on your jeep, but as I say, Jurassic Park is clearly not meant to be tackled alone. There's too much shit coming at you from far too many angles for that. I mean, if it were just a case of shooting whatever leapt on screen, like shot it, fell over, you move on with your day, this would be nowhere near as difficult as it is, but like a lot of these rail shooters at the time, Jurassic Park makes you blast nearly everything a varying amount of time before it hits the dirt. You take these Brachiosaurs, for example. Now, you can see here, you have to pump about a thousand rounds into their heads before they get the message and fuck off out of your way. You got a fairly tight window to do that. Not impossible, but you can't really afford to miss more than a couple of shots. There are parts of this game, especially the end boss fight, where not only is the attack window you have to damage anything absolutely fucking absurd, but it's turned on and off intermittently, and you've got the screen jerking around all over the goddamn place too. This part, <laughs> good fucking luck. If you went at half speed, you'd never shoot all these feet out your way in time. I'm gonna drive up your back, blast your spine open, and ramp it off your fucking head! You dinosaur, you extinct thing. This game's just full of distractions too, like those fish for example, the ichthyosaurs, they'll never attack you. They're just there to try and divert your attention from all the brachiosaurs. And the pteranodons here, look, this is like Jurassic Park's favorite of all its dirty fucking tricks that it abuses right the way to the end. Stick 500 triceratops on screen, only five are going to attack you. But which ones? Ooh. By the time you know, it's usually too late because they're all charging about six feet from your face anyway. And I swear to God, they occasionally switch over which ones are active. General rule of getting through this is to ignore anything at the very left and right of your playing area. Every now and again, the game will say, fuck it, and send a bloody Gallimima screaming out of the left flank to suicide charge your jeep. Look at this, that's clearly giant domp loads of dried pteranodon shit machine gunning my way through there. You can tell by the consistency when it crumbles and come apart like the other rocks in this game. From the size of the turds, your first guess would be Brachiosaur feces, but unless John Hammond genetically engineered them with some real fucking behavioral problems, can't see him heaving their gaping prehistoric assholes up the mountain just to shit on the road. Although that one's asking for a slap. You can't shoot Brachiosaur snot, you can cut through boulders, Dilophosaur venom, wreck jeeps, all sorts, but you can't blow that snot out the sky no matter what you do. You gotta come down here and take sexy Rexy on for a second time, and he's in no mood to let you escape again here. So, you see that you can almost only really attack him when he's in the middle of attacking you. When he starts his animation, you cannot miss, you have no breathing space to miss whatsoever. If you hit him from the moment he starts attacking to the moment he stops, you'll cancel his attack and knock him on his ass. Then he'll turn red to signify he's good and pissed off and start making stupid faces at you, which is your cue to blast him again and push him back. The real difficult part of this fight is not just that the jeep's bouncing around like it's got jelly for suspension, it's that the T-Rex's head won't stay the fuck still. Look, look, what's he doing now? Ha 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 ha. And there's that. Frog DNA they patched the dinosaurs up with in the movie kicking in there. Could T-Rexes leap that high in real life? Jesus Christ, you don't really need an answer to that, do you? Here we see the deadly log enclosure. They might not look like a threat, but turn your back on them, goddammit. Wily coyote car physics to enjoy that. You can almost see your player character holding up an uh-oh sign just before the drop. 
A little quirk of the emulation in this cave area is that there's meant to be a flashlight effect happening around your crosshair, but it only renders it to the second player for whatever reason. Get the fuck out of it! Fucking lizards. See there, those specific raptors that are programmed to jump on your jeep. If you don't hit them before they leap, you're eating some damage. Doesn't matter how many times you shoot them in midair, go fuck yourself. And of course, when they do get to attack you, they sit on the bonnet and take up a 30 of fucking screens so you can't see all their mates queuing up to do the exact same thing, so it just turns into a parade of raptor rape. Who builds a goddamn log bridge inside an active volcano? Is that not sort of incredibly fucking flammable? Scratch that, who builds a family theme park on top of an active fucking volcano? Oh ho, spare no expense to human life! Now the godforsaken island itself is attacking you, teabagging you with balls of molten rock from the sky. I like to think that this was John Hammond's original contingency plan for murdering everything in the park before Dr. Wu came up with basically making all the dinosaurs diabetic. The mad old bastard would probably have paid to crash the moon into the fucking island if he could have gotten away with it. Once again, I must remind you to pay attention to not only the small explosions occurring from our gunfire here, but also the fact that it's throwing fully grown 11 ton Triceratops 10 feet in the air. Please do keep that in mind for the ending, which is truly special. Fuck these rocks! Alright, watch this. I want you to watch very closely here. Gigantic boulder rolling down the hill after you. Shoot it enough time to push it back and stop it from damaging you. Fair enough. If you miss a shot, it rams you. Same as the Rex. But now look. Fuck right off! I did not have my crosshair off that boulder for one single arse hair of a second there, and it still rams you the last two times it comes at you. That, right there, even if you lock out and somehow get through the rest of this ball breaker without taking a hit, that's your no-hit run dead and gone the minute that boulder shows up. To be honest, I have no idea whether it's possible to stop it from hitting you with a second player backing you up. See, I could be making this a whole lot easier on myself by linking the second crosshair to mine in the machine calibration, essentially getting two times the firepower, but uh, one, that sounds an awful lot like cheating, and two, well, there's just something desperately lonely about that, isn't there? Rocks, rocks, fucking rocks. These are basically here to ensure that your health bar is good and low for the final boss fight coming up shortly. Don't even attempt to get those medikits if you're playing solo. The health you get from them is nowhere near what you'll lose crashing into the scenery while you're distracted. Right then, we made a very respectable fist of this so far, it has to be said. Decent amount of health left, the next section is not horribly difficult. We're on route for a no death -er here, lovelies. Get out! This is man's domain, you scaly bastards. This was actually very poorly received when it first came out, which I always found surprising, even at the time. I can only assume that the gaming journalists of 1994 were busy being dazzled by the new wave of FMV-based arcade-style rail shooters that were being released at the time, like Corpse Killer, Midnight Raiders, Crime Patrol, Lethal Enforcers and the like, and uh, I remember that back then, you couldn't just hate on a game because the graphics were shit, because that destroyed their entire narrative for simultaneously sucking the cocks of the Sega CD and the Super NES, so the journos used to come up with utterly ludicrous reasons why games were bad. For Jurassic Park, one review legitimately complained that all the dinosaurs did in this game was attack you. It's a rail shooter! The fuck else do you want them to do? Talk to you? Alright, what are we rocking here? About 50% get fucked. About 50% health heading into the final boss here. That is about as good a chance as I've ever had. Wanna throw a guess out as to what we're fighting? Yeah, you got it. He ain't no quitter. But looky here. He's brought a mate. Oh, fucking goody. The terror is only slightly nullified by the comical cartoon bomb drop sound they make while they're leapfrogging over each other to get at you. This first part is actually not too bad, as their only attack is to scream in your face right up close to the screen, which gives you a nice, clear, non-wobbly shot at them. But look there, see? That is bullshit. 
That's why I'm telling you the game's designed to be unbeatable on one credit without a second player backing you up. Alright, that's you out the way now, ship breath. We're down to one, but this certainly isn't about to get any easier for you. This T-Rex won't do you the courtesy of falling over when you cancel one of its attacks. Just mockingly shakes its head at you like, Nah son, don't tickle me. You'll just piss me off. No, fucking hell. No, it's alright, we're still good. So now the game makes out like it's gonna let you escape. I mean, you know you're not. The damn thing's still got a quarter of its life bar left. The Rex was defeated by foliage, hooray! But what utter bastards locked the back gate here? And this. They've saved the absolute worst for last here. Jesus Christ. It is nearly impossible to stop the T-Rex from attacking you. Pay careful attention to when it's being hit here with the yellow flashes. Right, taking damage, no longer taking damage, take... And it takes about a quarter second of damage there too, you see? When it's flashing yellow, that's when you're hitting it. So not only do they cut off your ability to hurt it about a second into its charge, they then switch it back on for an amount of time I'm not even sure there's a real name for, where you have absolutely no chance of stopping the attack. And it's really j Holy shit, I fucking killed it! I did it! I did Jurassic Park with one credit! Look, look, look at how much fucking hell I scraped past it on. <laughs> Ah, oh, Jesus, that's one off the bucket list there. <laughs> but no, shut up, time to celebrate later. Look at this ending. Look, why you haven't been killing the dinosaurs at all. You've just been knocking them out with tranquilizer darts. They're all okay. I, are you fucking joking? Right, let's just take away the fact that I was firing these so-called tranquilizer rounds with enough force to blast through solid rock and blow up a jeep. Ignore the fact that they were being shot out so fast and so hard that they knocked fully grown triceratops through the air like fucking cricket balls. Put aside the certainty that tranquilizer rounds or not, those pteranodons I blew out the sky broke their necks at the very least once they hit the ground. Isn't tranquilizing an animal a very delicate procedure? Don't you have to get the dosage exactly right depending on their size, weight and species? or risk pumping them full of too much knockout juice and killing them outright. I'm pretty sure when they need to calm a herd of rampaging elephants down on the savannah, they don't just pack a fucking 50 cal jeep mounted machine gun full of sleepy time bullets, drive out there and blast the tusk faced trumpeting fuck out of them like it's a mob hit. Tranquilizer rounds. <laughs> Have a fucking word with yourselves. But yay, I did it, hooray. I'm going to go and have a celebratory poo, lovelies. Join me next week. We're tranquilizing ghoul school for the NES. Don't miss it.